Story time, story time. Hercules and his ten labors. So obviously Hercules, right? I mean, the superhero, the guy who has his own Disney movie. Hercules, who's going to swoop in and save the day. Hercules, who's, that's his Roman name, Hercules, his Greek name, because he was Greek, was Heracles. But since we all know him as Hercules, let's just go with that for today. Uh, Hercules was half god, right? Uh, his dad was Zeus. His mom was, and now here's the situation, his mom was not Hera. Hera, Zeus's wife, so Zeus has an affair. Hercules is the result. Hera finds out about it, so she is going to be pretty anti-Hercules. And she's going to go out of her way to do terrible things to him that he's going to overcome and overcome and overcome because he's Hercules, right? So that's what, that's what we're taught in first grade, and second grade, and third grade. And then when we actually start reading about the mythology of Hercules, we find out that, gosh, he may not be the best guy to hang out with, right? He's going to do some pretty awful things. Now, some of it's on his own volition, but some of it is because Hera is going to put him in a, in a situation. Now, this particular story, the story of the Ten Labors, does start with Hera, and let me just say this now. There's about, I don't know, a million different versions of the Ten Labors of Hercules. Each one of the stories within this big story has different versions. So I'm going to go with the one that I'm telling. You can certainly look up uh, the other different, slightly different variations on the story, uh, if you'd like. So, Hera is going to... Uh, drug Hercules. Um, he's he's at the local bar. He gets a, he gets a couple a couple of a, a, a drinks, and he's going to be drugged. When he comes home, he's going to find out that there are intruders in his house, and they are doing terrible things. They're messing up his house, and so he's Hercules. So he doesn't have to do much. He just goes over and clubs them right, and he kills all the intruders. The next, and then he falls asleep on the couch because he's been drugged. Uh, the next morning he wakes up and it turns out, well, he did kill all those people. And their bodies are laying around. Unfortunately, in his drug-induced state, uh, the people that he killed were not intruders. They were his children and his wife, Megara. So, right. So the story starts off with Hercules killing his wife and his children. Something that we don't necessarily learn in third grade, but, well, there you go. Uh, so Hercules obviously feels bad about this, uh, so he's going to go to the Oracle. Uh, so he goes to the Oracle, and the Oracle, of course, the Oracle knows all, sees all, has all the answers. The Oracle says, Hercules, yeah, you really screwed up, so you're going to need to do penance. You're going to need to atone for this, so here's what you're going to need to do. You're going to need to become a slave for ten years. Um, and I have the perfect person for you to be the slave to, bad, bad grammar, to which you will be a slave, uh, to, whom, to whom you will be a slave, um, and his name is King Eurystheus. Eurystheus, uh, Hercules knows this guy, does not like this guy at all. I mean, hates this guy. They both actually hate each other. And Hercules says, actually, he's probably the perfect guy because I hate him so much and he hates me so much that, you know, I mean, I did kill my wife, and so he will be the perfect person whom I will be a slave for. I did it again. I ended the sentence with a preposition. Ah, we'll deal with it later. So, uh, King Eurystheus uh, is very excited about this. He's got Hercules. Hercules, right, for a slave. So, he's, gonna, he's thinking to himself, well, I can have the big dude do whatever I want. But really, what I really want to do, and uh, Queen Hera, the goddess, has come down and talked to Eurystheus and says, hey... Make sure that you can do something that gets him, you know, like out of the way. So Eurystheus says, I'm going to come up with some, I'm going to come up with a plan to get rid of Hercules. So Hercules shows up on day one and Eurystheus says, okay, Hercules, I've got, I've got uh, uh, something for you to do. In fact, I'm going to have you do 10 of these things. And at the end of your 10th um, assignment, your 10th labor, uh, I'm going to let you go. Hercules says, great, I'll just knock them off. Just let me know what they are. And Eurystheus says, okay, number one, you're going to go uh, kill 
the Nemean lion, the lion from Nemea. So Hercules says, I gotta go kill a lion. I do this in my sleep. This is no big deal. I'm Hercules. Okay. So Hercules um, takes his bows and arrows and he got in his club and his sword and uh, he goes to Nemea and he asks around. He finds the cave and there's the lion. It's a pretty good sized lion. And Hercules says, eh, this, this isn't a challenge at all. He takes out one of his arrows and shoots the, shoots the lion and the arrow plink, 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 plinks right off the Plink. Plinks right off the the hide of the lion. Hercules thinks, well, that's man, that's pretty impressive that the lion, you know, can't be hurt by an, an arrow, but that's okay, I've got my sword, so he goes over and he ah, stabs the, the lion. But the sword doesn't enter the lion because the lion's hide is so is so thick. The lion wakes up, because the lion was sleeping at this point, the lion wakes up and, and uh, growls at Hercules, and Hercules is like, huh, can't uh can't stab him, can't shoot him with the arrow. I could try to club him. Or, and here's the better idea, put him in the old sleeper hold and wrestle him, right? So he, he jumps on the back of the lion and he puts him on the sleep puts him puts him in the sleeper hold and he puts the lion to sleep and then squeezes a little tighter and he suffocates the lion, and the lion dies. So uh, he wants to bring the lion back to King Eurystheus for proof, but it's kind of heavy, so he thinks to himself, well I'll just skin the lion, right? So he takes out his, his sword and he tries to skin the lion, but he he can't poke through the skin to skin the lion. So um, he, he's, he's thinking about it, he's thinking about it, and the goddess Athena shows up and she says, hey Hercules, think this through. Use one of the lion's claws to cut open the lion. And so Hercules does that. He uses the claw of the lion and is able to cut the lion's hide off. So why this is important for us in mythology is that if you ever get to go to uh, Greece or you get to go to museums that have Greek statues in it and you're sitting there thinking, man, I don't know which god this is or who that god is because it's not labeled or whatever, you can almost always recognize, oh, that's Hercules. Why? Because he's going to have either a hat that has lion ears or he's going to have a cape that looks like lion hide, or he's going to have a shawl over his shoulder that ha that's a lion. And so you'll be able to recognize Hercules, uh, because he's the guy who wears the hide of a lion. Which, now that you think about it, is pretty smart, because if somebody's shooting arrows at him, hey! Right? So he goes back to the king, and King Eurystheus is so freaked out that Hercules did not die. King Eurystheus is like, oh, okay, you know what, from here on out, don't actually come into my throne room. Why don't you stay out there and I'll just send you some, you know, we'll, we'll have a messenger to go between us because you're kind of freaky that you killed the lion. Number two, uh, Hercules, what I need you to do is I need you to go kill the Hydra over in, Lerna, in Lerna. So the Lernian Hydra. So a Hydra is a dragon that has uh, several different heads. This particular Hydra was born and bred by, uh, by uh, Zeus's wife Hera who bred this dragon, this Hydra, specifically to kill Hercules. So, of course, Eurystheus finds out about this. Eurystheus sends him to go kill the, kill the dragon, on his, or the Hydra. On his way to kill the creature, uh, Hercules runs into his nephew, Aeolus. So, Aeolus says, hey, Hercules, can I tag along? And so, Hercules is like, yeah, come on, I'm going to I'm gonna go kill a Hydra, a multi-headed dragon. Let's go. So... Hercules shows up, there's the dragon, Hercules takes out his sword, he starts to, he cuts off one of the heads, there's three heads, right? So he cuts off the head, and he goes like, alright, two to go. And while he's battling with the second head, out of the neck, out of the neck of the first head that he cut off, sprang, sprung, springed two heads. So he cut off a neck of one head, and two heads popped out. He thought that was weird, so he cut off the head of another head, and uh, cut off the head from another neck, and two heads popped out. And he cut off the head of another neck, and two heads popped out. And now we're up to six heads. So he goes chop, 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 and now we're up to ten heads, all on the same dragon, on this Hydra. Hercules realizes this is a losing battle because the more he fights, the worse the creature becomes. Either Aeolus or Hercules comes up with the idea of cauterization. So cauterization is when you take fire and you apply it to a burn, or you, 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 no, you apply it to a wound, which then 
burns burns the, the skin around it, which closes it up. Ugh, and I'd hate to have to do that to myself, but I mean, sometimes you just gotta close it up, right? So, uh, the plan is, Hercules is gonna cut off a head, and then Aeolus is gonna take a torch, and he's going to cauterize the neck. So he's gonna form that scab over the neck, so heads can't pop off. Well, it works. So he cuts off nine of these heads, and Aeolus quickly uh, uh, cauterizes the necks, and everything's great until we get to the last head, and the last head is immortal. It cannot be killed. Hercules cuts the head off, but the head's still trying to, you know, lying on the ground trying to bite him. And so Hercules takes a giant rock, and he puts, he puts the rock on top of the head. Now, stepping out of the story for a second, um, I taught at the American School of Classical Studies in Athens, Greece, back in 2009 in the summer, and was taking a bus with some of my students. And we're driving, we're dri driving uh, south from Athens uh, into the Peloponnesus, and we're, we're driving by, and there's the town of Lerna, and we're like, oh, wait, wait that's Lerna. This is where the this is where the dragon and sure enough there's a pretty good sized rock out there that everybody's like, oh, it's right there. That's where the head's buried under that rock. And all my students were like, hey, let's uh let's go let's go dig it up, let's go see. And I'm like, eh, I don't think that's that's probably not a good idea. Plus they're probably not big fans of people trying to do that. Back to the story. So round number three. So he's already killed the lion, he's killed the hydra. Number three. Uh, Eurystheus realizes that, eh, man, if he can kill the Hydra, Hercules can pretty much kill anything. So let's do something different. Let's do, let's do a different challenge. Hercules, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go get me Artemis's, the goddess Artemis, the goddess of the hunt. I want you to go get her pet deer, her hind, so from Cernia, so the Cernian hind. Uh, so the goddess of the hunt's pet deer who apparently is pretty fast. So Hercules is like, you just want me to go get it? All right, bring it back? Sure, no problem. So he goes and he finds the hind and he stalks up behind the deer and just at the last second as Hercules is trying to jump out and grab it, the hind sees him and the hind probably smells him and the hind takes off. Well, no, but it was fast. I mean, it was really fast, way faster than Hercules, although Hercules is pretty fast. I mean, his dad Zeus, right? So Hercules chases this hind and he goes, he just runs his hind down. Months of running. Months of running. He gets up to a year and is still chasing this deer. Now, different, different versions of the story say that either he eventually wore the deer out, or my favorite story, uh, mini story within the story, is that he, fi he finally was like, you know what? I'm going to shoot it. So he took one of his arrows and he shot the deer in the leg which brought the deer down. As soon as he goes over the deer, and he's like, okay, boom, I finally got you. Poof, here comes Artemis, the goddess of the hunt. So that would be uh, Hercules' aunt. And Artemis, one of the big 12 go Olympian gods, says, Hercules, did you just shoot my pet deer? And Hercules is like, hey, um, yes, but here's why. And he's going to be fine. I'll put a bandage on it, and he'll be fine. Artemis agrees, it's everything's going to be fine. Hercules bandages up the deer, he takes the deer back to King Eurystheus, and Eurystheus says, all right, give me the deer, give me the deer, give me the deer. Hercules walks over to the deer, but oh, accidentally drops the rope as he's about to ha hand it to Eurystheus, and the deer's like, gone. And Hercules turns to Eurystheus and says, man, you should have caught him. Ah, oh well. So that's number three. Number four, the Ermathian boar. So we're talking about a giant pig, right? Hercules is like, I, I don't want to waste my time getting a, a pig. So instead, I'm going to party with a couple of centaurs. So the centaurs, you know, the half man, half horse, right? Centaurs are known for a couple of things. One, they're very smart. Two, they uh, are pretty good with the bow and arrow. And three, they like to party pretty hard. They like to get drunk. Well, centaur wine is apparently, according to mythology, pretty strong. And so uh, Hercules who liked to drink, uh, Hercules decided, you know what, I haven't had some centaur wine, I'd like to try it out. And so uh, one of the centaurs says, hey, uh, Hercules, this is probably not a good idea for you. And Hercules drank the wine, and Hercules immediately got drunk, and he started <laughs> taking his bows and arrows and shooting it at random objects. Unfortunately, some of these random objects were centaurs. And here's more unfortunate news. If we go back two stories, 
the Hydra, one of the reasons the Hydra is such a bad dude was that its blood was poisonous. Well, Hercules knew this, and so when he finally killed the Hydra, he took his bag of arrows and he dipped a lot of his arrows, not all of his arrows, but a lot of his arrows, he dipped them into the blood of the Hydra. So his, uh, many of his arrows, again, not all of them, but many of his arrows are tipped with poison. Go back to the boar story. He's shooting these poisoned arrows at these centaurs, and centaurs are dying left and right, and it's all not good. <sighs> Once he recovers from his hangover, he is going to eventually find the boar and kill the boar and bring it back. Number five, the Augean stable. So Eurystheus realizes, maybe I can just embarrass the dude. Maybe that's, maybe he'll give up if I just embarrass him. So he goes, to, uh, King Eurystheus goes to his, his buddy, King Augeus, who has these stables that have 10,000 cows. These cows are immortal, which means they can't be killed. And all they do, all they do all day is eat and poop. Well, King Augeus has not cleaned out the stable in years and years. So... Hercules is required for number five to go clean out the stables. <laughs> when he shows up, King August hands him a, a shovel and he says, I need you to go clean out the stables. Hercules looks inside the stables and is like, there's 10,000 cows in there and they're all pooping and there's so much poop in there, it'll take me. Ah, ah, Hercules sees something out of the corner of his eye. And he goes up to King August and he says, hey, King August, I'm going to make a deal with you if, if I can clean out these stables in one day. I mean, all of them, in one day. What would you give me? And King Augie says, yeah, right, dude, if you can clean out all my stables in one day, I'll give you 10% of my cattle. I'll give you a thousand head of cattle. Hercules says, deal. So, he goes to the stables, he picks up his shovel, his shovel, he goes to the stables, he walks through the stable, he doesn't shovel anything, he walks through the stables, he goes down down uh, to the river, so there's a river pretty close to the, to the stables, and he, he dams up the river. He then takes his shovel, and using his Hercules speed, he digs a ditch from the dammed part of the river through the stables and then back out to the river. And when he gets the ditch dug, he then undoes the dam, and the river flows very quickly through the stables and washes it, all the poop washes it all out. And, and there you go. And so King, uh, King August comes down, you know, later that afternoon, and he sees that his stables are all cleaned out and it's all done in one day. Well, there you go. That's number five. Number six. Hercules is required to get rid of the Stymphalian birds. So the Stymphalian birds are like harpies. So harpies are vultures that are that have the head of a of an old of an old lady. Uh, they're known for uh, two two things. One, their poop is poisonous, and they like to poop on everything, including people. And three, they have the foulest mouths. Ah, foul because they're birds. Huh? The foulest foulest mouths. Uh, possible, and so they like to use uh, they like to use uh, uh, inappropriate language, and they can take they can take a inappropriate word and make it a noun or a verb or an adjective or an adverb or a conjunction or a punctuate uh, or a preposition or a interjection. Take it all pronouns. Did I say pronoun? Um, at will. They're that good at cussing. So they show up, or uh, Hercules shows up, and, and all these uh, birds, these Stymphalian birds, these harpies, are sitting up in the tree. And Hercules comes up and he goes, Hey, could you guys leave? Because you're really irritating the people around here that you're pooping on. And the birds explain to Hercules uh, that his mama is so fat that, and it gets, it gets awful. Hercules uh, tries to... Uh, tries to shoot a bird and the birds laugh at them laugh at him uh, because they can see it coming and so and they, and they dodge and so he's like man so he tries to shake the tree and they laugh at him and they try to poop on him and so he's, he's not getting anywhere with this Athena shows up 
And it's the second time Athena's shown up, right? Have I said that? Yeah, the second time Athena's shown up. Athena, who is not big fans of Hera, I think this is why she's helping Hercules. Athena shows up and says, hey, here's a rattle, like a baby rattle. Use that. So Hercules is like, what, what a, a baby rattle? Are you kidding me? She goes, use the rattle, dude. So he takes the rattle and he goes, rattle, 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 rattle. And the birds in the trees, the Symphelian birds, they start freaking out and they start flying and they're flying into each other. And so now that they're distracted and they don't see him, he then takes his poison tipped arrows and he starts shooting them. And he shoots enough of them that they eventually get the message and they, they fly away. So that's number six. Number seven, the Cretan bull. The Cretan bull. So uh, Hercules uh, has to go down to Crete where he uh, meets King Minos. And so the Cretan bull is the bull that is the father of the Minotaur, right? So the Minotaur is the half bull, half man who lives in the labyrinth that's going to have to deal with Theseus later or before. How it work? <laughs> Greek mythology, man, their, their timelines are really weird. Uh, and this isn't a big deal. Hercules goes down. He talks to Minos. Minos says, I get it. You can have the bull. He takes the bull. He brings it to Eurystheus, Eurystheus says thank you, and then they sacrifice the bull to Hera, unfortunately for Hercules. Number eight, uh, the mares of Diomedes, so these horses. So there's four horses that Diomedes owns, or Diomedes, I'm going to go with Diomedes. Diomedes owns these four horses um, that are big, tough, and I mean, oh by the way, they also, they also eat people these four horses, and only Diomedes knows that they eat people. So Hercules shows up with a couple of his buddies, and uh, he, he knocks on the door and says, Hello, Diomedes, yeah, can, can we come in for a little bit? Oh, well, hey, by the way, Diomedes, he's a little crazy. So Diomedes is like, Oh, Hercules, excellent, excellent. It was about time for me to, you know, feed the horses. Would you like to come in? And Hercules is like, Yeah, me and my guys would come in, and Diomedes says, oh, Would you like to go out back and so I can show you how to feed the horses? And, and Hercules is like, no, I think I'm good, but you know what, do you have any wine? So Diomedes says, yeah, I've got some wine if you guys want to, you know, have a couple of drinks, soften you up a little bit, and then we can go out and we can feed the horses. And Hercules is like, yeah, I've been, been meaning to tell you, I need to borrow your horses. And Diomedes is like, sure, you can borrow my horses as soon as we feed the horses. So, uh, so Hercules is like, great, dude, appreciate that. Diomedes serves these guys wine. Uh, Hercules continues to drink again. He likes his drink, and so he continues to drink. And the other guys, they're like, "Okay, we're done drinking." Diomedes says, "Hey, would you two? Would you like? Would you guys like to go see the horses?" And they're like, "Okay." And Hercules is like, "All right, let me just finish this jug, and then I'll be I'll be out there with you." So Diomedes and the two guys they go outside. And Diomedes comes back about 15 minutes later by himself, and Hercules is like, "Hey, where are my where are my buddies?" And Diomedes says, <laughs> "They're feeding the horses." <laughs> <laughs> so Hercules is like, that's weird. He he he's done drinking, so well, he's never done drinking. He he uh, goes outside with Diomedes to see the horses. And he's like, where are my buddies? Where are my buddies? And Hercules and uh, Diomedes says, Hercules, they are literally feeding my horses. And Hercules finally it dawns on him that these horses, that his buddies are now being fed to, and are being eaten by, and have been eaten by these horses. So. Uh, Diomedes, standing behind Hercules, grabs Hercules and tries to throw him into the pen where the horses are. And Hercules realizes this last second and is able to counter the move and he tosses Diomedes into inside the fence. Diomedes is then eaten by his horses and apparently now the horses are all full because they're nice and calm and gentle. So Hercules takes the horses and he takes them to Eurystheus. Interesting note, interesting note. Um, uh, Alexander the Great, so he's like a real person, right? We've talked about Alexander. Alexander the Great claims that his horse, Bucephalus, is a direct descendant of Diomedes' uh, horses. That's number seven, uh, number eight. Number nine, just two more to go. The belt of Hippolyta. So Hippolyta is the queen of the Amazons. So the queen of the Amazons, uh, she has her own island, and Hercules is told to go get her belt. So Hercules uh, gets on a boat, and he goes over the island of Hippolyta, the queen of the Amazons, and basically that island, there's no men allowed. So uh, Hercules shows up, 
and he, he tries to talk the women from shooting him with bows and arrows. And so eventually he gets across to them that he'd like to meet, he'd like to meet the queen. So he goes up to the queen and she's like, oh, Hercules, you're so buff, you're so amazing, so handsome, kind of like me. And um, what, what do you need? And so Hercules says, well, I, interestingly enough, I need your belt. And Hippolyta, the queen of the Amazon, says, oh, okay, you know what? I'm going to give it to you. While she's about to give him the belt, while he's about to take the belt from her, and, just, and this has been easy, Hera, the queen goddess that hates Hercules, he, she shows up. And she convinces all the Amazons who are sitting around doing nothing that, uh, that Hercules is actually inside uh, Hippolyta's uh, place and he's trying to put the move on her. And so Amazons, that's not good for the Amazons. And so the Amazons decide, oh, we hate Hercules. And so they all rush and they're going to attack him. As they start yelling at him and start brandishing weapons, uh, he realizes he's in big trouble. So he grabs the belt and he runs into that story. Number 10. Okay, number 10. The Cattle of Geryon. So Geryon is uh, a dude down in uh, South South Libya, so across the Mediterranean Sea, who has uh, three different heads. Three different heads. Is that right? Yeah, three different heads. And three different shields and three different lances and however many arms that makes. And uh, he owns his, this cattle. Hercules has to go get the cattle from Geryon. Hercules goes across the Mediterranean Sea, he goes into Libya, uh, he looks up the sun, Libya is really, really hot in the summer, in the desert. He looks up the sun, he says, hey sun, could you, you know, like, I don't know, turn it down just a notch? And the sun laughs at Hercules. So Hercules takes his bow and arrow and he points it directly at the sun, one of his poison tipped arrows, and he says, son, you better turn it down a notch or I'm going to fire this arrow at you. And the sun's like, oh yeah? Okay, yeah. I'll turn it down a notch. Uh, Hercules uh, goes and finds the cattle. He kills a two-headed dog, and then eventually he takes his club and he knocks knocks Geryon out. Bang, bang, bang. Um, and then he takes the cattle. Uh, interestingly enough, his uh, the way back is more is is crazier than the way there. He has to take this herd of cattle, and of course, uh, he's by himself, or he's by himself, and so he's got to try to round up the cattle, right, like a cowboy, and he's got to get them across the Mediterranean, uh, Mediterranean to Greece. So, uh, unfortunately for him, Hera shows up as a gadfly. So a gadfly is that little bitty fly that everybody hates, the giant horse flies, and she starts to bite the cattle, which causes the cattle to go insane, which causes them to flee everywhere. So Hercules has to track down all these different cows. Eventually, he catches all of these cows except for one bull. He takes all the cows to Eurystheus except for the bull, and he goes, all right, I'll be right back. So he goes and he chases this bull, and this bull goes uh, north into Macedonia and then uh, west into Albania and then uh, swims across, let's see, that'd be the Adriatic, um, and ends up in, uh, in the boot, right? And so uh, on, the, on the land, it looks like a boot. And so Hercules eventually tracks it down and brings the bull back. And so the, uh, the Greek term for bull, the Roman term for bull, is Italus. Italus. And so he found the bull in the land of Italus, which, well, there you go. You can figure that out yourself. So that's number 10, and he's all done. So he shows back up to Eurystheus, and he says, Okay, Eurystheus, done. I got my 10 out of the way, so I'm out of right? And Eurystheus says, oh, no, sorry, no, no, the one with the hydra, it didn't count. Hercules is like, whoa, whoa, wait a second, it didn't count. I killed the hydra, you told me you killed the hydra, I killed the hydra. And Eurystheus says, no, you, yeah, you did kill the hydra, but you had help. Aeolus was there, and he was cauterizing the wounds of the, of the hydra, so you, it doesn't count, you gotta do one more. Hercules is like, seriously, dude? Okay, right, fine, what, give me, what do you, what do you need? Eurystheus says, you know what, I've got a taste for a golden apple. Ugh. A golden apple. So her so Hercules is like, where am I supposed to get our golden apple? Not like, you know, like a regular golden apple that you go down to Walmart and get your golden apple. No, these are one of the famous golden apples. Started the the Trojan War, right? So uh Eurystheus says, I don't know, go find your golden apple. So Hercules starts to ask around, he asks around, he asks around, and nobody knows where you can find these golden apples. And so eventually he's directed to um He's directed down to uh, 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 Atlas. 
Atlas uh, was punished by Zeus. Atlas is one of the uh, uh, one of the Titans who was punished by Zeus during the during the famous Titan War, um, and his punishment is that he has to hold up the Earth, like by himself. He holds the entire Earth. So maybe you've seen a little statue of the guy, you know, like holding the Earth. That's Atlas. If he drops it, everybody will die. Everybody on the Earth will die if he drops it. So. It's pretty important that he holds it up. And so he goes to Atlas and he says, Atlas. So Hercules goes down to the bottom of the world and says, Atlas, do you know where the golden apples are? And Atlas says, in fact, I do know where the golden apples are. Hercules is like, great, could you tell me? Because I need to get a golden apple. And Atlas says, uh, I would like to tell you, and I could tell you, but I'm not going to tell you because, frankly, you probably couldn't get there because there's a dragon and, I, you know, and you don't know the secret code word and all this kind of stuff. But I do. I do know all that. Hercules says, okay, man, but you can't leave because if you drop the world, then uh, everybody dies. Atlas says, tell you what, Hercules, I'll make you a deal. I'll go get your golden apple if you hold up the world for me while I'm gone. I'll just be gone for like five minutes and I'll be right back. And Hercules is like, you want me to hold up the world for like five minutes? Just five minutes? Atlas is like, yeah, just five minutes. Like, and then I'll, I'll be right back. So Hercules is like, okay, give me the world. So Atlas puts the world on Hercules' shoulders. Hercules goes, oh, this is heavy. This is like really, really heavy. It's like the entire planet, right? So Atlas is like, ha, ah, you loser. You're you loser. I can't believe you. No, dude, guess what? I'm going to go get your stupid apple, and I'm going to put it at your feet. And he does. He goes, five minutes later, he goes and he gets the golden apple, and he brings it back. Atlas brings the apple back. He puts it at Hercules' feet, and he says, ha, huh, look at that. See ya, Hercules. I'm leaving. I'm outie. And Hercules is like, whoa, 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 whoa. I thought you were going to hold the world. And Atlas is like, dude, why would I hold the world? That that punishment, that was awful. I'm not going to do that. You're stuck. Hey, by the way, don't drop it. Don't drop it. Everybody will die. Hercules, as and Atlas starts to walk off, for Hercules is like, oh, man. Ah. But he's not stupid. Hercules comes up with a plan. He says, Atlas, Atlas, before you go. Before you go. And you know what, Atlas? You're so smart. You, you tricked me and that, I, wow. I mean, wow, good for you. Um, but, will you do me a favor? It's a simple little favor. Atlas is like, anything for my buddy who's holding up the world, what can I do for you, Hercules? Hercules says, when you handed it to me, I thought I was only gonna hold it for five minutes. But now that I realize I'm gonna hold it for the rest of eternity, I'm, I w I'm holding it like this and I'd really like, kinda like to hold it back on my shoulder like you had it because I, I didn't think I was gonna have to hold it that long. So can I, would you help me put it in fact, there's a pillow over there. Um, can you go get that pillow and maybe put it under? Yeah, yeah, here. Thank you. No, no, put it a little further. Here, hold this for a second. And Atlas says, okay. So Atlas takes the world back and Hercules is like, sucker! And then he takes the apple and Atlas is like, drat. <laughs> Atlas take, uh, uh, Hercules takes the apple and he brings it back King Eurystheus and says, pa-pow! I've done 11 of your 10 labors. I've done 11 now. So. I'm, I'm gone, right? And King Eurystheus says, no, dude, guess what? Uh, number five didn't count. Sorry. And Hercules is like, which one was number five? Well, number five was the stables. Cleaning out the stables didn't count. Hercules is like, dude, I did that. I did that all by myself. I did that, in fact, in one day. And King Eurystheus says, yeah, but here's the deal, dude. You got paid for it. You made a deal with King Augeus, and now you got, and you got paid those 10,000, or those thousand cattle, and if you get paid, that means you're not a slave, which means that one didn't count. And Hercules is like, S d really? <sighs> okay. Okay, give me one more. King Eurystheus says, okay, excellent. I've been, think I've, been, I've been thinking about this one. I would like you to go get Hades' pet, the three-headed dog. All the Harry Potter fans in the world are like, oh. Fluffy, right? Severus, 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 the three-headed dog. Hercules says, "Okay, if I bring back the three-headed dog, then I'm done, right?" Herc and Eurystheus says, "Yeah, man, yeah, absolutely, you can go. If you can, br if you can bring back the three-headed dog, Hades' personal pet that guards the underworld, absolutely, man, you can go." So Hades, uh, I'm sorry, Hercules finds the tunnel. He goes down into the underworld, and sure enough. As he's walking down the down the tunnel into the underworld, there's this three-headed dog, and he, and the three-headed dog 
very playful, just a, just a regular dog size, and, and her she's like, oh, you're kind of cute, and the three little heads are licking him on the knee and, and licking him on the hand, and her she's just sitting there playing with him, and it's like, oh, hey, buddy, guess what? I'm, I'm just going to borrow you, dude, and I'm going to take you up, and, and service is like, yeah, and so Hercules like, ah, oh, before I take you, though, I probably, I, I, you know, I probably ought to check this out with Hades, so I'll be right back. So Hades, uh, Hercules walks, walks past the dog. That's an important point. He walks past the dog, and he goes down, and he sees Hades. He says, Hades, Uncle Hades, um, do you mind if I borrow your dog? I, I mean, I've got to do it because I've been doing this thing, killed my wife, and then I have 10 labors, and now I've got to do 12 because a couple didn't count, because the poop, and eh, it doesn't matter. Can I borrow your dog? And Hades says, you want to borrow my dog? Hercules says, yeah, 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 the, that cute little three, three-headed three dog that has come down the ramp and he's right there and he, you know, I was playing with him. And, and Hades says, yeah, dude, <laughs> don't kill my dog, but if you can convince Cerberus to come with you, no problem, dude. Go get it. Hercules is like, I don't know what the problem is here. Why are you laughing at me? And Hades is like, yeah, see, here's the situation. Cerberus is real nice to people who are coming down the ramp, but going back up the ramp, you'll see. So Hercules goes, hey, Hercules is like, I don't care, whatever, it's a cute little dog. So Hercules starts to go back up the ramp and he sees that the cute little dog is no longer there. Now this cute little dog is actually much, 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 much bigger and his teeth are much, much larger and his drool is so much more and the hair on his back is sharp as razor blades and oh, he's not very nice. He starts barking at Hercules and Hercules is like, have you seen a cute little dog around here? And then he sees the problem. He sees that this is the same little cute little dog except he's no longer the cute little dog. He's now the famous dog that keeps people in the underworld because the cute little dog couldn't have done it but this dog can certainly do it and Hercules sees the problem. So. He thinks, well, maybe if I shoot it, nah, I can't shoot it because I told Uncle Hades I wasn't going to hurt the dog. Mm. So he goes with plan A. Do you remember plan A? Well, actually, that'd be plan C. He does the Nemean lion thing. He puts Cerberus in the sleeper. Oh, but the problem is, there's three heads, and two of them are going to bite him. So he puts he puts the, the one on the far right, or, yeah, he puts him in the sleeper, and the one on the far left, he puts him in the sleeper. And then I guess he uses his legs and puts the third one in the sleeper hold, and the dog falls asleep. So Hercules picks up the dog, who's now asleep unconscious, and brings him uh, all the way up the ramp and takes him to King Eurystheus. When he goes into King Eurystheus' throne room, King Eurystheus is right there, and he's like, Dude, that's actually like the dog. That's the dog. You can't, you actually did, you brought the dog. And Hercules is like, Yep. And so now I'm, I'm good, right? I'm good. And King Eurystheus is like, you brought the dog. I keep, yes, Hercules, your debt is paid. Everything is good. You, you, are, you are officially no longer a slave of mine. You are free. Please take the dog back. Hercules says, oh man, if only you had said take the dog back and then you're free. But here's what you did. You said, I'm free. And then please take the dog back. And you got those backwards. I'm sorry, Eurystheus. I'm free, so I don't have to take the dog back. And Eurystheus is like, but you're going to take the dog back, right? At this point, Fluffy, the dog service, he wakes up. Hey, uh, Hercules, who's walking out the room, turns to, turns to the dog and says, Hey, puppy, guess what? King Eurystheus wants to get out of the room. You're not, you're not supposed to allow people to get out of the room. And service turns to yours, the and goes. All right. So that's the ten labors of Hercules. If you are, uh, by the way, the end. So it's the ten labors of Hercules. So if you are ever asked on a trivial pursuit question, or on on Jeopardy or some some quiz show, and it says, "How many labors did Hercules have to do to complete his ten labors of Hercules?" The answer is not ten. It's twelve because two of them didn't count: the dragon and the stables. Okay, there's your mythology story of the week. I think we're good, right?
Stay safe. Be good. You know the drill. Catch you on the flip side. Bye.